That 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 I, I I was not expecting it to go like that. Like her head, I'm just like damn. Like her teeth was looking all perfect and shit. I'm just looking admiring, you know, the pictures. And then boom, boom. She got the what? What happened? Hey, what it be? It's your boy Dre OG. Welcome back to the OG family. Make sure y'all smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're rocking with the vibes and the content. But look, man, make sure y'all got those notifications on so y'all can see these videos as soon as they drop. But look, man, we got these top ten scary Hollywood secrets, y'all. So look. We all know we done heard crazy stories about Hollywood. And I'm just here to react to it, man. I'm just here. I'm, I'm interested to see what they have to say. Some of these things, do they hold any truth to them? Let me know your comment. Let me know your thoughts on this stuff in the comments down below. This video is for educational purposes as well, but we're going to have a good time. Let's get it secrets i feel like it's one of the most corrupt yet rewarding industries corrupt because as a woman god knows how many directors and producers try to force themselves on you or make you sleep with them for the role of a lifetime mm. and of course i'm sure the list of drugs going around at after parties is also endless and obviously the onset offset affairs oh yeah you pretty much nailed it there everyone always wants to know everything about the biggest hollywood stars i mean when i was younger i would dream about being a famous actress in hollywood but boy the stuff that goes on down there is insane as both like aspiring actresses like i'm like excited to enter the industry but i'm always like <laughs> what could be happening? What's gonna happen? <laughs> Who knows? Mm. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan. I'm your other host, Eamon Hassan. <laughs> and today we're gonna be doing the Top 10 Scary Hollywood Secrets. Starting us off with number 10 are drugs. This is honestly no secret at all. Hollywood is filled with drugs because contrary to popular belief, money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you a sh ton of drugs. If you don't want to take my word for it, take it from Dennis Quaid. The actor said he had dabbled in cocaine before becoming a star, but it was just for casual use. I love how that's so casual, like, oh, just cocaine for the casual use. <laughs> in 1974, he moved to LA and his usage didn't get out of control until he started being on set for all these big mainstream movies. Quaid revealed that movie budgets disguise cocaine as petty cash to keep the drugs on set a secret. Moreover, it's freely given out on movie sets because it was just the norm back then and everyone oh, wow. was doing it. He then shared his coke addiction caused his life to fall apart and it was because of Hollywood. Another prime example is obviously Matthew Perry who plays Chandler on Friends. If you didn't know that, are you literally living under a rock? Now he was seriously addicted to cocaine for like three full seasons of Friends, which he doesn't even recall filming. I didn't think it was given out that sparingly though, but you know what they say, cocaine is the rich man's drug. Moving on to number nine, we have the casting couch. So this is probably not, not the surprising. biggest secret anymore, but for quite some time it was. Basically, there's a lot of sleaze bags in Hollywood. Some Hollywood directors or stars invite females over and, well, offer them roles and movies in exchange for certain favors. Yeah, with that thing on his lip. <laughs> Call this the casting uh, couch. Pretty gross. It's absolutely disgusting. Like they use their wealth and power to persuade innocent people. But sadly, a lot of people desperate for fame will agree to this. Yeah, they In will. an interview with GQ magazine, Megan Fox actually revealed the truth behind this. She said that numerous big Hollywood legends would invite her over for what she thought was just going to be like a meeting for a new opportunity. But when she got mm. there, she realized their true intentions. She shut down several men throughout her career at number eight we have alfred hitchcock this one honestly pains me because I it's crazy that they can like actually mess up your career though especially like you know like that's i'm just gonna say that's just gross bro this is gross my nigga like you feel me them old dirty balls I love his films, but he's such a trying to manipulate the young girls. Human being, like, I'm like, Argh. since his films emphasize a voyeuristic viewpoint from the male protagonist, most female characters were almost just like stock characters. They were remote, usually blonde, sexy, and in the end, they always got humiliated. With films like Psycho, Rebecca, and of course The Bird, the man achieved a lot but was a total dick. He once referred to actors as cattle, which I mean, you may be directing the movie, but they bro, look, 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 look. And this is, look, man, I'm going to point out something, bro. We got to start. Look, man. The moment I start falling off and shit, like, bro, I'm, my health look like it's slipping and stuff like that. Let me know. Because there's no reason why he should be walking around here with his fucking chin looking like that, my G. Right, look, man. 
They are literally bringing it to life. With the bird, there was major controversy concerning Hitchcock and his treatment unacceptable. of the female lead, Tippi Hedren, who plays Melanie. After she was cast, Alfred became literally obsessed with her and would grab her out of nowhere, non-consensually, and touch her sexually. He stalked her throughout shooting and would isolate her from the rest of the cast while whispering explicit things in her ear. Tippi okay, obviously though. shut down all advances and he did not take that well. In the last phone booth attack scene, Tippi's face- like a thumbprint, don't he? That shit crazy. This was cut by the glass pane, and she said she was misled about the logistics of the scene. Or did Alfred just do it on purpose as revenge? If that wasn't petty enough, he also signed her to a seven year contract that restricted her ability to do work. This was actually never confirmed, but it came to light after he died, and even her co star confirmed it. Apparently, he also taunted Tippy's daughter, Melanie Griffith, by giving her a wax figure of her mum in a coffin as a present when she was only six years old. Making our way down the list of number seven, we have the Hollywood sign. So, a lot of dark things go down in Hollywood, as you probably realize by now. Right. One of them was the suicide of Peg and Twistle, a struggling Hollywood actress. She Remember. had dreams of making it big in Hollywood, but sadly, that didn't happen. She was a successful Broadway actor, but didn't have much- Yeah, I can tell, look, I'm telling you, them eyebrows, look, when they're that thin and shit like that, it's just like a sign of like misfortune. Success in the film field. Her one role was a 15 second appearance in the movie Hazel's Cousins. The pressures of being successful in Hollywood, along with the Great Depression, kind of got to her. On the night of September 16th, 1932, she climbed to the top of the H on the Hollywood sign and jumped to her death. Now, this mm -hmm. tragic incident actually had a huge influence on current pop culture. In the 2009 film Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, the H in the Hollywood sign was made the entrance to the underworld. In Lana Del Rey's song, Lust for Life, it starts with the lyrics, climb up the H of the Hollywood sign. It's assumed that these are both references to Peg's death. Now, at number six is Jane Mansfield. To be honest, I had not seen wow. Jane until I started researching this video, but wow. Have y'all ever seen like the, like the breakdown of like the conspiracy behind like Hollywood and stuff? I mean, I could do a video on that. I know some people was asking me to do conspiracy theories and stuff, but. You know, that's just crazy. It gets deep, but you know, it's however you want to interpret it. You feel me? I'm not telling y'all what to think. She was actually gorgeous. She was an American actress, singer, nightclub entertainer, and one of the first Playboy playmates. She was in movies like The Girl Can't Help It and Too Hot I'm to Handle. I'm not looking at nobody's and a bunch face. Of more movies that came out way before I was born, and I haven't seen any of them. Oh. Now, in 1967, Jane was Brilliant. in Mississippi doing some appearances, and on the 28th of June, the plan was to go to New Orleans for another appearance. So Jane, her driver Ronnie, her attorney Sam, and three of her kids got into the car and set off on their way. At around 2:30 on Highway 90, their car was speeding when it crashed into the back of a tractor trailer. The, looks so the adults fake. in the front died instantly, including Jane, but her children thankfully walked away with minor injuries. Now, apparently, uh -huh. Jane was actually decapitated since the car had its top literally sheared off and it looked like her hair was tangled in the windshield. But it turns out she just suffered from severe head trauma, as in her skull was crushed. I love how I was like, just severe head trauma, that's a lot. And the blonde it's hair crazy. was from the wig that she was wearing, apparently. It was this incident that propelled the NHTCA to start adopting an undried guard on their tractor trailers, which is sometimes called a Mansfield bar. Fun fact, one of her kids that survived was Marishka Hargate, who you all must know from Law and Order Special Victims Unit. I literally used to watch her so much growing up, I was like, damn, she has a hard name. But then I realized people pronounce my name really badly, and I'm like, mm -hmm. That got dark so real quick, y'all. We are now at our fifth and how that, that that I I I was not expecting it to go like that. Like her head, I'm just like damn. Like her teeth was looking all perfect and shit. I'm just looking admiring, you know, the pictures and then boom, boom. She got the what? What happened? halfway mark with the cursed project the 1961 film the misfits was filmed with old hollywood stars like marilyn monroe montgomery clift and clark gable so you would think it would be a big success right 
Not so much. In fact, this movie is said to be cursed. When filming, they experienced a number of setbacks and bad things would happen to them. Then Gable died of a heart attack a few days after filming. Marilyn Monroe overdosed on set and then died barely a year later after the film was finished. And the night that the movie was airing on television, Cliff died of a heart attack. That's so spooky. Like all three stars died very soon after the production ended. So it's thought that this movie is somehow cursed. And number four is Superman. No, I'm not talking about Henry Cavill, but I honestly really wish I was. No, I'm talking about George Reeves, who not only played Superman on TV in Adventures of Superman, he was also Superman in the film Superman and the Mole Men. And also, producer Chris just told me there was also a Christopher Reeves who also played Superman. But what made George notable was the manner in which he died or got murdered. On the 16th of June, 1969, the LAPD reported that George had been shot in the head at some point between one and two in the morning. Mm. The people in the house at the time were his fiance Lenore and four other people. They all went out, some to a restaurant, whereas Reeves went to a friend's wrestling match. Around midnight he went to bed while two of the friends were downstairs just having a bit of a party. Apparently he came down and angrily told them to be quiet, then calmed down and stayed for a while, had a drink and then went back to bed. All the guests were downstairs when a while later they heard a single gunshot and by the time they went upstairs they found him lying across the bed naked with a pistol between his feet. It looked like he had shot himself and the friends took an awfully long time to call the police so they were so shocked and so very drunk. One friend claimed his fiance was actually upstairs with him and came down after the gunshot telling everyone to tell the police she was downstairs the whole time. Oh, All right, wow. Oh, shady. There was no gunpowder on Reeves's hands, no fingerprints on the gun, the bullet was found in the ceiling, yet there were also multiple bullets in the ground, yet they all only heard one gunshot. On the flip side, George was also sleeping with Fixer and MGM VP Eddie Mannix's wife Tony at the time, but you'll find out about him later, he is a douchebag. Rumor had it that Eddie had mafia ties and found out about the affair and had him killed. Yeah, so exactly what that was. Killed him, the mafia killed him, or he actually did commit suicide. I don't know. Coming in at number three, we have the mysterious death. Nah, it's the mafia, or they made him do himself, or they was gonna do his wife. Like, it's crazy. Of Thelma Todd. At just the age of 29, Thelma Todd became a successful Hollywood star. That was until December 16th, 1935, when she was found dead in her car in Jewel Carmen's garage. Jewel Carmen was an actress and wife of Roland West, who Thelma had the occasional fling with. The cause of death was carbon monoxide poisoning. However, her car wasn't running when they found her, and it still had fuel in the tank. As a result, this has become a huge Hollywood scene. Secret. No one truly knows what happened to her. Was it accidental or was it her ex-husband seeking way. revenge? Maybe it was her business partner or secret lover. Maybe even her shady agent. We really don't know. Now, Wes did say that he locked her out, which made her seek refuge in her car. And so she may have accidentally killed herself from having the car running in a closed garage. Yeah. But autopsy revealed that she had damage to her throat. One popular theory is that she died at the hands of West, who then staged her death to look like an accident. There's just a lot of secrets surrounding the case. Someone knows what happened, but to this day, we truly don't know. Now, at number two, but that's is the wild fixer. though. Some believe any publicity is good publicity, but I mean, there is legitimately bad press out there. Like, if you're gonna get caught getting arrested for a DUI or you go to jail for murder, that is bad publicity. You may have heard of this before, but in Hollywood, when someone gets to a bit of a sticky situation, they hire a fixer like Michael Sitrick to twist the negative stories into positive. Positive ones. I get why fixes are so important since celebrities get to shit every week, but sometimes they protect the wrong people. For example, back in 1937, Patricia Douglas, a 20 year old actress, went to an after party for the MGM annual sales convention. And just imagine this party as a giant Hollywood frat party where people can legit do whatever they want because of how much money is just floating in the air. Either way, during the night, MGM sales exec David Ross, along with a friend, forced her to get drunk before sexually assaulted. Assaulting her. Patricia obviously wanted to press charges and she did, but MGM got their fixer, Eddie Mannix, who I also mentioned beforehand, got them involved and he made sure David's studio was never mentioned during the scandal. That in turn ruined Patricia's reputation and Eddie somehow also got a portrayal in Hail Caesar, which 
is some sick kind of karma after ruining Patricia's life and God knows how many more. And in our number one spot, we have The Poltergeist. This 1982 film has been scaring people for years, and not just from its creepy storyline. No, the film itself is cursed. In fact, it has been named the most cursed franchise in Hollywood. Brace yourself. It's about to get creepy. So first off, the skeletons used in the rainy pool scene were real skeletons. Yeah, apparently it was cheaper to get real ones than to make fake ones. So that's probably how the film the became what? cursed. Then while filming a scene where a character gets choked by a robot clown doll, the actor actually got choked by the doll. Steven Spielberg thought that he was just doing a really realistic performance, but then noticed that he started to turn purple. That's not all. Multiple actors from the movies died tragically either during or after filming. Dominique Dunn, who played the older sister in the first movie, got murdered right after its premiere. Then oh, wow. two other actors died from cardiac arrest. And Lou Perryman, who was Pugsley in the movie, got brutally murdered by an ex-convict. So yeah, too many freaky coincidences for the film not to be cursed. Well damn, you, you know what I'm saying? like. We just gonna end it like that? I got a lot more out of this than I thought I would, you know? Yeah, I don't know if that's the vibe for me out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I'll be good where I'm at right here. I'm good. I'm good, you know? Very discouraging. I don't want any party favors, anything like that. I just wanna just be me, live my life, and be happy, you feel me? But look, man. I see you on the next video. Like I always say, spread love, man. There's too much hate in this world. Love you guys. See you on the next video. I'm out. Bye.